Thank you for sitting down with us. Um, you were just on stage, yeah. the first conference of uh, the second day of the World Policy Conference. Um, my question would be, what are the major implications, um, according to you, because you're from Mongolia, yeah. um, of the Ukrainian conflict? Yeah, I like this conference, first of all, the World Policy Conference. I think I call it kind of the uh, political Davos, you know. Also, it's, uh, it usually takes in a different region, in the Middle East, in the Middle East cities. And uh, most of the conferences are taking places in Europe, in America. But it's a very important place in the Middle East. Also, people come from all over the world and universities and all uh, with, with the very different backgrounds. And also, it's a great place to make network and also to bring good messages to the world politics. I think it's a really great venue. I like to participate in this conference and also you feel free, you know, you, you, you are just- You can a, be very yeah, open yeah, in what Very you, open, what was your enjoying message? and- uh, What was your main message? Yeah, of course, uh, yeah. more dialogue, more conference like this, more talk, more engagement is good for the for the world community if i come back to my first yeah, question uh, yeah. about ukraine, ukraine. Uh, you have another perspective then uh, you know yeah with ukraine i have two three connections my personal connections yeah you've lived i actually there. studied in ukraine in western ukraine for five years i lived in ukraine for five years you know during soviet time i was a student there i met my wife there and my son was born there because of that i have that family uh, attachment also you know ukraine is free independent country in europe mongolia is free independent country in asia between us there is only one country mm -hmm. russia and that actually connects us. I think uh, uh, um, uh, this war happening in Ukraine, one of the many reasons that uh, uh, Russians uh, uh, authoritarian government, Putin felt that Ukraine may become bad example for Russia. If free Ukraine, if prosperous Ukraine, if successful Ukraine, you know, that might be a big challenge for Russia. And because of that, I think uh, uh, President Putin is, uh, uh, had uh, some uh, uh, idea to punish it. And uh, uh, also Ukrainians are fighting not only for Ukraine, Ukrainians are fighting for our common fate, to live in peace, to live freely. And also Ukrainians have a full right to exist. And because of that, we have to support Ukraine. This is our common cause. And since the start of the war, I supported Ukraine. Also, it has global implications. For example, in Asia. That's Mon what I was Mon about yeah, to ask. Mongolia, yeah, yeah, Mongolia is only vibrant democracy between Russia and China. If there was no Ukrainian war, I think maybe in Asia that security arrangements would do be different. Maybe China already yeah, started the forceful unification of Taiwan, maybe. Because of Ukraine, I think uh, leader of China is thinking, weighing, uh, weighing about uh, that uh, attempt, you know. If, if it uh, like a 2014 Crimea scenario, he may do it. But uh, if it uh, became 2022 Ukraine scenario, you know, whole world unite against aggression, against forceful unification, that might be very bad for anyone. Also that front line actually not only in Ukraine, that front line runs between free world and authoritarian world all the way in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in, in America, everywhere. And I think if Ukraine is successful, those free world people who want to live freely and independently, they will be encouraged. If Ukraine loses, I think those authoritarian governments will be encouraged. And because of that, we have no right to lose. And we, we only need to support and unite behind Ukraine for until to the end means that end of this war. After that, there are going to be big movement. Uh, yeah, rebuilding Ukraine. We have to join to that effort.
Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much.